how to make a single player map for RTCV part 3 where I do some more mapping. Launching the editor, GTK Radian, opening the map, Romeo.map. First thing I'm going to show you is clipping. Press the control key and right click to place a cutting point. Do it in two places and then you can toggle with control and the return key on your keyboard which part that you should save. Control and the return key and you can toggle which part to keep. And once you have decided which one to keep, just press the return key and that part will be saved. The other part is deleted. Suppose you want to keep both parts. What do you do? Well, the trick is to press shift and the return key. That way you split it into halves. So you can keep both sides. I want to show you a final trick when it comes to the cutting tool. So you can do a three dimensional cut. Well, kind of hard, but if you practice, you get the hang of it. Okay, let's move on. Give this one a nice texture. And then we're going to check what is uh, detailed. And the quickest way is to control plus D on your keyboard and you can toggle to see which structure is uh, detailed and which is not. Turn everything into detail. That's the way to do it. Now I'm just gonna cut the corners for this nice uh, design of mine. Hang on. Just control and right click. Now you might wonder, what is the minimal gap for a human player to pass through? And in my experience, if you set the grid size to eight, and then you make it five steps wide. Five steps wide, that's the minimum for a human player to pass. And this is according to my experience. I mean, there might be some others who might have different opinions. And then for the height, I just make it 13 steps high. This is the minimal height for a player. Now, please note that the bots, they need considerably more. So if you want to make a door for the bots to pass through, you have to make it a bit wider. Okay, things are going smooth. Select the wall and press N and increase the ambient value. Save your map. Open, go to the editor folder and installs. Wolfpack, install main maps and open one of the original map files from the original RTCV game. And we're gonna copy stuff. So press shift and left click on the mouse to select items or stuff that you like. In this case, I'm selecting some sort of statue and a torch. What else should I select? How about this lamp? Press shift and left click to select items. Then I click edit on the menu and select save as prefab. And I put it into this folder. You can call the file whatever you want. Close this map and open your own map. In this case, Romeo.map. And then let's see what happens. Well, just select edit load prefab and you go to that folder where you put it and select it and just open the file. Ta-da! Those prefabs are now opened inside your Romeo map. Deselect everything by pressing escape. Then select one of the items and just drag it into your map. It's that simple. Just imagine how quickly you can populate your map with items from the original RTCV maps. Now, the traditional way to select items is to hold the shift button and left click. 
Now I'm gonna show you another way. It's quite handy. You gotta go to the 2D window and use the control plus the tab keys to switch to the top view. In other words, the Z view. There we go. And here you just draw a new brush that covers all items. Then you just click on this button and zazam! All items are selected and the brush is gone and you just drag the items into the proper place and keep working on the map. Now I'm gonna put the lights over here and they just, <laughs> they can't free float so I need to create some sort of uh, plank or something that can hold them in place here. Hang on. Yep, looks as it's gonna fit. This texture is not a line, so I need to select just this surface. And you do that by pressing Control, Shift, and then left click. That's the way to select just the surface. Then press S to bring up the surface inspector and click Rotate until everything looks great. Here, let's continue mapping. What else is there to do? Well, we got these uh, prefabs. Just click and drag and put them into the place where you want them to be. I'll just toss them in here. I don't know what it's going to look like, but just for the pure experiment. Okay, I want to select everything here, but instead of clicking each sub item, I just draw one big brush and it could be either above or under it. As long as it's covering the item in the top view in the 2D window. And then I press the button. And everything is selected and I can just click and drag it into place. Smooth. Now let's compile the map again using one of the final renders. And here we go. Creating a new BSP. Go to the map folder and copy Romeo BSP. Then go to the uh, making the AAS file, just paste it into that folder. Double click the batch file to create the AAS files and then move this dot so that the file extension is .aas. And then just take those and put them into the map folder. Throw away the old PK3 file. And then just zip these files. And then rename it into .pk3. Then you copy this PK3 and put it into the RTCV main folder. And then just launch the game and just type in SP Dev Map Romeo and hit that enter key. Voila! Here's the first map, Romeo. And let's take a close look here. Everything looks nice. Now, whether or not you should use the ambient value 30 or something else, that's open for debate. Here's the statue, it seems to be working. And here's that torch. Doesn't have a hurt trigger yet. We'll fix that later. And here's the door. This is, in my experience, the minimal width for a human player to pass. Hello? Down you go. This door is the minimum standard for a human player to pass through. So if you want bots to pass through, it needs to be wider. And here's that nice lamp. Let's switch to the next map, Sierra. It should load automatically. And yes, it does. This map looks nice. A bit too modest, perhaps. I need to add some more details, but we can do that later. Hello there. Oops. Oh, okay. Let's go back to do some additional mapping. 
You start the editor, open the map, click on the weapon, press N and increase the amount of ammo from 18 to let's say 30. Then you need some lights close to the enemy, so just copy and drag some lights on the enemy. What's next? Yeah, we need some sort of hurt trigger. So just create something uh, around the fire, give it the texture trigger. And then turn it into a trigger hurt. And the default value is, uh, I think, 5, so lower that to, I don't know, 2. And then we can compile the map. And then we open the next map, Sierra. Click on the Thompson and increase the amount of ammo. Let's insert a model. So right click, MISC. MISC game model and inside the map objects just pick any model and I have to caution you here sometimes these models they will not show up in the game so you have to try and see which model does work then we put the model in place and also remember that these models they are not solid so in other words if a player runs into this model he or she will pass right through it so we need to put a clip brush around the model its color is red and it's simply an invisible brush to stop the player from crashing into the model. Just select this brush and click on the clip texture. This will turn it into a clip brush. In other words, this brush will stop the player from running into the model. Okay, let's place a second model here in the corner. And for this one, I'm not gonna put a clip brush around it, just to prove that the models by themselves are not clipped. Put a light here, just to illuminate the model. Then we save the map and we compile the map to create a new, fresh BSP. So what's next? Open the Tango map. Change the amount of ammo to, let's make it 28 bullets. Select the ground and make a triangle in the corner. Highlight the triangle. And press V on your keyboard. That way the corners are highlighted and they're also draggable. You can click and drag. Let's do it in the other corner. And as you can see, it can be draggable in any direction. But by locking the map in the X and Y axis, keeping the Z axis free, that way you can move the brush or the corner only in the Z direction. That is up and down. Let's continue to do this in every corner. Oh, lower that one a bit. There we go. Create a couple of triangles in the middle of the map. And select them and press V and raise the middle. Everything seems to be looking nice. Let's insert another model and this time it's a bush. And frankly, I'm not sure that this bush will work because uh, some of the bushes, well, they don't show up in the game. You can only see them in the editor and this is very frustrating, but it's typical of RTCV mapping. Some of the things that you see in the editor, they just look corny or they're completely invisible in the game. So trial and error are the two keywords for RTCV mapping. First map, Romeo. Still looks beautiful as usual. Hello there, Mr. Guard. I'm behind you. And now, you're dead. Whoa! Maybe we need to lower that hurt value. Moving on to the next map. I know what you're thinking. Such beautiful maps. We're on map two, Sierra. And here's a Thompson with 28 bullets. 
Let's reload and check what's around the corner. There should be a guard here. Yep, and there's the model. Come get me. So this model is blocked by the clip brush. This model doesn't have a clip brush, so I can run straight through it. Hi there, nice try, but I'm switching to the third and final map, Tango. Our beloved outdoor map that ends with a boss fight. Corners, looks okay. Now where's that bush? It didn't show up, I knew it. Well, try another model, just keep experimenting until you get the map to look the way you want. Hope there's the end boss, I'm not gonna fight him. I'm just gonna run towards the end to finish this map, this campaign and this video. Oh hi there, I'm afraid you're too late. Now, if you watched the video all the way to the end, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.